In this video, I show you five great features of Capture One Pro 20. If you enjoy this video or find it useful, then please like and subscribe. Until the end of March 2020, Phase One have a 25% discount on Capture One Pro 20 for Fuji and Sony users. Please see the description below for a discount code and links. One of my favourite tools, which I use on nearly every image, actually probably every image, is the Levels tool, which is a great tool for adjusting the overall tone of your images. If I want to, say, darken the blacks, I just bring this tab up here. Let's just put that back for now. Now, if I want to bring up the whites, bring down the whites tab. Let's do the whites and the blacks, which effectively adds contrast. That looks pretty nice. And next I can set the gamma, which is sort of the relationship between black and white. Effectively, it's a bit like brightness. It darkens or lightens the midtones. Move it to the right for a dark and moody image and to the left for a nice lighter look. Really nice, but I think I'll make this one really, really dark. That looks pretty good, silhouetting the dark trees against the bright sky. That looks very moody. And then we have our output controls, output tabs. The scale the output. So I can use this tab to bring down the output whites, and this tab to bring up the output blacks. This is actually a really quick way, if you bring it up like so, to make a nice faded effect in your image. Which is nice, people seem to love the faded effect. Also, let's just reset this. You have this control for each of the red, green and blue channels. I'll just choose the green channel and then you can play around with the, just the green gamma. And I can also do the same with the reds. And this isn't affecting images with a red hue, this is affecting the red channel in the colour. There is a really big difference between the hue and the channel. And the same with the blue. Now this may look like it doesn't have much use, but it does, because you can radically change the colours of objects or the scene. It's not the same as using the colour tools to change the hue, but sometimes it's the right tool for the job. Okay, let's just go back to our RGB. And here you can set your image black and white points. Pick this to select the black point, like so, and then the other for setting the white point. Pick and select. That's a really fast way of setting your tone range. And that is the Levels tool, an absolutely essential tool for me. Another thing I love about Capture One is the speed. It's just so responsive. It makes editing photos an absolute joy. So if I go up to exposure, for instance, and move the slider, the sliders never lock, they never lag, it's beautifully responsive, and the changes happen instantly. Everything's just slick. It all updates nice and quickly and nice and smoothly. There's no input lag that seems to plague other programs that I could speak of. When selecting different images, for instance, these are all raw files, and when I select the images and switch from raw file to raw file, it's instant, I'm not waiting for a second or three or four seconds before I can go in and edit the image. There are some editors out there that make you wait for up to four seconds or maybe more for the files to be ready for you to edit, which is not only annoying, but if you've got hundreds of photographs which you've got to edit and prepare for production, then you need to be able to go from photo to photo quickly. If you're a wedding photographer, for instance, then waiting a couple of seconds or a few seconds for each image when you've got thousands of them really adds up. Also, scrolling through your images in the browser is fast and smooth, super responsive. I don't know of any other editor which comes close to Capture One as far as overall speed of operation. It's beautiful. This speed even extends to using external editors. If I want to send my image to something like Affinity Photo, it will be fast. So if I just right click on this image, we'll test this, and then choose Edit With, and choose Affinity Photo, click Edit Variant, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and I'm in. Literally 4 or 5 seconds and I'm in, ready to edit. Let's go back, and when I'm finished with Affinity Photo, it would just deposit the image back here. Again, near enough instantly. 
So for me, the speed is a really important factor in why I use Capture One Pro. The shadow and highlight recovery in Capture One Pro are absolutely superb. Here we have a very difficult image with the sky being totally overexposed and the foreground being far too dark. But because this is a raw file and I'm using Capture One Pro, with just a couple of sliders I can completely recover this image. Here on the High Dynamic Range tool, just bring down the highlights first and look at that right away, absolutely superb, all of that sky detail back. Next we want to bring some detail back into the shadows and up with the shadow slider. And there we go, we now have all of that detail retrieved using the HDR tool in Capture One Pro. Beautiful. Now Capture One Pro isn't just adjusting the highlights and shadows here, it's also applying HDR techniques to bring back detail. And now all we have to do is go to our level tool and bring down the blacks and bring up the whites a little bit. And now I think I'll add a little clarity and we're done. There we go. It looks really nice, look at that sky, absolutely gorgeous. And without the fantastic high dynamic range tool here, we just wouldn't have that quality. And also, if we want to bring out a little bit more detail right here in the deep blacks, we can use the black slider, which, as you can see, brings out detail from the very deep blacks. Lovely. And this is why I think the High Dynamic Range tool in Capture One Pro is so good. It can retrieve information from an image that I've never seen another image processing package be able to do. It is excellent. Another one of Capture One Pro's great strengths is the customization and flexibility of the interface. So let's take a look. Here we have our browser, which we have at the side at the moment. But if we want it at the bottom, all we do is go view, customize browser, and then place below. And there we have it along the bottom. There it is along the bottom, or we can hide it completely. Here we go, control B, gone. Now I like mine along the right hand side, so let's just place it back. You may like your tools to be on the right hand side, no problem, we can put the tools on the right and the browser on the left. All we have to do is go tools, customize tools and place right. And now they've swapped places, absolutely superb. I can change the size of the thumbnails in the strip here just by dragging, like so. Have them any size that I like. And if I want to see more of the thumbnails, I can bring up the browser view, just press G. And again to bring it back really quick. It's all just so quick and easy, really nice. Let's just pop this back to the way I like it with the tools on the left and the strip on the right. And there we go. You can also completely customize all of the toolbars. You can right click and add a tool, so right click here, add tool and choose any tool you like in any tab. You can scroll the tools up and down like so, but if you want a tool to be static all you have to do is move it to the pinned area. So now the white balance isn't scrolling, it's part of the pinned section up here. And then if I like I can put it back into the scrollable area and move it to any section that I like. Really flexible, lovely. And of course, we can collapse any tools that we want to, to make space, temporarily. We can also remove any tools we like to. Capture One Pro really does have the most flexible interface I've ever seen. And if you want to, you can even create yourself whole new tool tabs, completely customized tabs of your own design. Just right click here and add tool tab. Then just create a custom tab here. And that new tool tab can have all your own favorite tools or the tools you need for a specific task. And it also has its own icon up in the icon area here, which you can select. Just brilliant. And the tools can also be individually undocked. So for instance, if we're adding points to the curve tool and we want a little more resolution for moving the points around, all we need to do is just drag it off. Then we can resize it and there we go. We've got more resolution for moving our little points around. Excellent. When I'm done, I can just dock it. Let's see this in action on the color tab. Let's select the three way and drag it in. If we want to make much more fine adjustments to the color controls, now we can. Brilliant. And when we're done, again, we can just pop it back. 
I really do think that the customization of the tools and the layouts in Capture One are absolutely fantastic, really, really flexible. You really can customize the interface for any job or for the type of photography that you do. And once you've designed your workspaces, if you want to, you can save them to disk for use later. Or you can use built-in workspaces. It's really nice. All you do is go to Workspace, Workspaces, then you have a choice of defaults, and you can save and load your own. Brilliant. The colour editing tools on Capture One are absolutely second to none. They really are superb, so flexible. Here we go. Here we have the colour editor on the colour tab. So here you have a basic tab, which allows you to pick your colour range, then change the hue, saturation and lightness, much like other programmes. I'll have a little play with the greens to see the effect on the foliage. There we go. You can do all of the things you normally do with a basic colour editor. I'll just reset that. And you can also use this little picker to pick any place on the screen and use your mouse to change the hue, saturation and brightness of the colour range. This is really responsive and gives great results. I use this very often. Now, other programs do have this functionality, but Capture One has something extra. You can also alter the ranges of these colour selections. It's not down there. It's up in the three dots. There we go. Click the three dots, and now we can edit the colour ranges, which allows you to edit the ranges of the zones of all these colours. So you can move the segments around to create your own custom ranges and also alter the smoothness, the fall off. And the great thing is, once you've had a little play with the ranges or altered them for the various colours. They're there for that image. They're actually per image. Next you have the advanced colour editor, which allows you to pick individual colours and then edit them. So I'll pick the yellow on this ice cream van. Then once you've picked your colour, it's added to the list. And you can change things like the fall off, the smoothness. You can change the saturation range that, it, that is affected for that colour. And you can change the normal things such as lightness, saturation and hue. It's all really nice and you can just keep picking colours and adding them to the list. So I'll pick another one. I'll pick a red. And this is a really powerful tool because you're not just stuck with the predefined ranges. You can really target the colours you want and then you can decide how and how much you want to change them. It's excellent. And we have what's called the skin tone editor which is designed for you to pick a colour for skin correction. We'll pick some skin on this girl's leg. I'll just quickly zoom in. And then here you have very subtle hue, saturation and lightness controls which are perfect for making them little adjustments to skin. Now this is just affecting the range, remember, that we've chosen here on the leg. The most powerful part of this tool is right here. Here we can change the uniformity of the tone, saturation and lightness. This is a perfect tool for evening out the skin tone. That's what it's designed for. Let's really go mad and even out this skin here. We'll up all the sliders, here we go. And now we can see that the skin tone colour we chose is evened out. And that's obviously too much, but this is a really powerful tool. I use this on skin all of the time, and when combined with the masking capabilities of Capture One Pro, it really does come into its own. It's super powerful. And there you have the colour editing tools, but we also have something better than split toning. The colour balance tool. Let's open it up. Now the colour balance allows you to alter the master colour. So the master colour allows you to change the shade of all of the colours on the screen with one tool. We could say warm it all up or cool it all down. Really nice. Or I can affect the shadows, midtones and highlights separately. Maybe I'll want to warm up the midtones or make them nice and purple. And the same with the shadows, we can alter the colour. And also the same for the highlights. And you can also change the brightness and saturation of each zone with these little tools on the side. Here we change the lightness and here we change the intensity or saturation. It really is quite cool. I use this colour balance tool really often. So if you wanted to quickly just brighten up the midtones, all you have to do is up this. It's a really nice system. It's way better than just straight split toning. This system's much more powerful. And also, if you like, you can see the shadows, midtones and highlights as separate tools. And there we go, a quick look at the absolutely superb colour controls within Capture One Pro.